Greetings, royal family. I'm back. Okay. Black China. This was a good episode, I have to say. I don't even know what episode this is, but what number episode this is. But I have to say that this was the... One of the scenes in this episode was the best thing that I've seen on Black China's show since watching, okay? So... If you remember from last week, China and Tokyo sat down together with Dr. Siri for therapy. China ended up walking out. Nothing was resolved. You know, Tokyo was speaking over China. She wouldn't let China talk. She started to get aggressive. She talked, 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 talked. She wouldn't listen. The usual. So now, this episode opens up with China in the kitchen with Jamal, the gentleman that is her makeup artist, I guess, and then a hairstylist. I don't know if he's necessarily China's uh, hairstylist, but anyway, we've never seen him before on the show. I don't think. Anyway, so Jamal is asking, who's her manager? Jamal is asking, how did everything go with therapy? So China is basically saying that at first, Dr. Siri was getting on her nerves because he kept comparing her to animals. In the exit, just to provide clarification, in one of the exercises, he gave her a list of like three or four different animals with characteristics of each animal, asking China to identify with one of them. That was the exercise. I think that was more of like an icebreaker kind of, and to kind of get her to open up because she wasn't feeling it at first. So she like, you know, she just like act like it was just a huge inconvenience. She said he was getting on her nerves. And once she started to get comfortable, she started to talk. So he asked her, Jamal asked her, how was it when you sat down with Tokyo? Was anything resolved? She said no. And it wasn't. Nothing was resolved. She stated that she walked out. Um, and yeah, nothing was resolved. You know, she says that she doesn't like talking about the past. She just wants to kind of get over it and move on. And it just really made me like, dang, China, you really are this. Are you in denial or are you just really this oblivious to how this works? You know what I mean? And I don't mean the show, but like, what do you mean you just want to forget about the past? And she also got irritated at the fact that the doctor kept asking her about the men in her life. Like, you know, the fathers of her two kids and what her relationships were like with men when she was younger. She found that irritating. But sweetie, that plays a part in... A lot of your behavior today like what do you not understand about that like okay so she seems to think that you can just move past whatever the issue is without having to talk about the past and not bringing up the past but my question is how can you get past something if you don't know what the something is that's holding up you and your mother's relationship because nobody wants to admit anything, take responsibility. Uh, nobody wants to be wrong. You know, uh, nobody wants to talk about it. So if, if you show me how that works, then okay, you know. But yeah, I guess she just doesn't want to be bothered. So Jamal proceeds to say, do you think, and I, and, and you know, this question was a little shady, but he says, do you think that there is anyone that's in your circle that could be preventing you and uh, Tokyo from mending your relationship? And he, you know, he had his arms folded in the kitchen and he's just like, you know, and China laughed and then she, she told the cameraman to cut the camera. She was like, I'm so serious, cut the camera. Basically, what he was trying to say is he's trying to say, because he, he said, I met with Mama Tokyo, you know, and her makeup artist says, you know, to us, Tokyo is cool, but she's your mother. You know, she's different. The relationship is different with us than it is with you. So, you know, is it a matter of do you do you want her or do you need her? And China's response was like, need is like a necessity. Duh. Like, you need water. Gucci glasses. Like, I want Gucci glasses. That was her answer, verbatim. That's what she said. Her words, not mine. So I, I don't I don't know what that means um, in reference to what the guy was, what her friend was asking her, a makeup artist. But hey, it makes sense in her head. So before the cameras were cut, though, 
somebody asked about Ashton, like, oh, can we send Ashton to get food? And that's when she revealed that Ashton is no longer working for her. Um, she said it's all good. Things just don't, you know, sometimes things don't work out. She started talking a little bit about how she met Ashton. He was a fan. And I don't know if she was trying to be funny when she said that. And she told him, hey, you know, I would love for you to come work with me. She moved him in the guest house and things just didn't work out. But she did say that he's very sweet and she wishes him the best and it's no bad vibes, no bad feelings, yada, yada. If you've been following the media with, with this show, then you know that obviously this was taped months ago and we found out that Ashton is no longer uh, working with her along with Jamal and I think Freshy. So a lot of her crew, her crew is like falling apart. And of course, this is China doesn't understand why. You know, when people say things like, you know, it just didn't work out. That's basically code for I don't want to talk about either what they did or what I did. I don't I don't want to talk about it. And they're not obligated to, but you know, I can see right through all of that. Anyway, so the next scene is Miss Mary. Ah, oh, thank God, some relief. Miss Mary is a I guess China calls her her spiritual advisor. She is a Christian woman. Um, she is an older woman and she was referred, China met her through one of her friends, she said. So Miss Mary comes, pops up, visits China, sits down and is talking to her. And I noticed that China's energy, her body language was very kind of, not immature, but, you know, kind of childlike, safe. She was a lot safer and respectful respectful toward Miss Mary versus Dr. Siri. She loves Miss Mary. You know, China says that there's been plenty of times where she's come to Miss Mary's house two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, and she's sat with her for two, three hours, and she helps her. She showed Miss Mary the a clip from the show um, when Tokyo and her were in the kitchen, and, and Tokyo was like cussing her out. So after Miss Mary watched that on the phone, she was like, wow, you know, what else is there to say? She said, I don't even know what to say to that. She's like, that's just very disturbing. And I see a lot of anger and a lot of pain. And Miss Mary, I, I, I like this lady. I really do. Um, yeah, I really like her because China seems to be very comfortable with her and she can kind of be honest. And China was talking about some things that she was just basically like comfortable saying about how the media perceives her one way and she always has to put on and she always has to be black China, you know, and Miss Mary was just telling her, you know, you have to get yourself in alignment with God. And she says that I've invited you to my church a few times, you know, and what you have to understand is all of the things on the exterior, that's one thing, but who you are on the inside is what really matters. So that's the work that you have to, you have to, uh, that's what you have to work on. And China's just talking about like, you know, I, I want to do this. I want to do this. I, I want to uh, focus on being a good mother and master getting money and master my businesses. And Miss Mary says, you're not going to master that because you're not the master. He's the master. She's referring to, you know, God, talking about God and she needs God in her life and she needs to get herself in spiritual alignment. And she wasn't being, what's the word I want to say? It wasn't like a fire and brimstone, you know. She was really just having a conversation to her with her. And Miss Mary made it very clear that, you know, she's a woman of faith. And she says, you know how, you know, my angle is like, you know, I start, everything starts with, um, with God. And she wasn't being, I don't want to say overly obsessive, but she wasn't like, beating her down and telling her, condemning her. Like I said, that fire and brimstone approach that a lot of Christians, um, you know, give off to people. And China seems like, in that scene anyway, she seemed like, she wasn't BSing Miss Mary, you know? She wasn't interrupting her. She was sitting down, she was listening. And I felt that Miss Mary really had some positive things to say. And the thing is, see, Miss Mary is not, she's not trying to coddle China and she's not trying to belittle her either. Like she really encouraged her and says, you know, you are a beautiful human being. You're kind, you're nice. You know, we just have to get everything. You need to work from the inside out. So she says, you know, I don't get caught up in all of this. You know, it's very beautiful, well put together, but I know that you 
have to do that. You know, you have 14 million people following you and keep that in mind because maybe God is allowing all of those people to see you so that you can possibly reach, you know, maybe that little girl who can't find her way and someone who's gone through some of the same struggles as you. So she was being very, that conversation was very productive, you know, and China didn't feel pressured into going to her church, but China did say that she wanted Miss Mary to come along with her to Bishop Noel Jones's church, which is out there in California. Now, uh, Miss Mary knows who Bishop Noel Jones is, she said, but her body language was like, yep, yeah, I, I know who he is. And I, and I don't know what her opinions are about him, but she probably has some, you know what I mean? And, but I like the fact that they met halfway. China didn't necessarily go to her church, but she did ask Miss Mary, Hey, can you accompany me to this particular church? And with no hesitation, Miss Mary said, yes. So I think, why the heck didn't China sit down with Miss Mary before she went to go see Dr. Siri? Is it because Dr. Siri has seen so many celebrities and you wanted that on the show? Like, no disrespect to Dr. Siri. But I don't think that he is a right fit for China and, uh, and Tokyo because he was very delicate. He was very just soft-spoken. He wasn't, he didn't... Miss Mary would have been good. You know, Miss Mary don't have time. She's not going to coddle you. She's going to give you correction with love. That's what I'm trying to say. She's going to correct you and she's going to correct you with love, you know? So I really like that scene. So um, in the next episode, you're going to see that they go visit Bishop Noel Jones's church. And the message was really, the little snippet that I saw, the message was really good. So I'll save that for next week. But, oh my God, the scene. Scene of scenes, ladies and gentlemen, Lord have mercy, treasure and black China. So I've been waiting on this scene for a good two weeks, three weeks, maybe, because it's been all over social media what happened with them. So here's the thing, right? Uh, treasure has been trying to get in contact with China. She says she's been calling her, texting her, calling her, texting her. China has not been answering her phone calls or text messages. So I guess, uh, Treasure contacted the producers who are that producer. They're a bunch of instigators. I'm telling you this right now. They are a bunch of instigators. Treasure wanted to contact the producers because she felt that that's the only way for her to get in contact with China because China was basically ignoring her, right? So China feels like anytime I don't answer the phone for Treasure, she always just comes to my house. Okay, she didn't do that, whatever. Treasure wanted to talk to China off camera. She didn't want to have a conversation with her on camera for whatever. When she got there, the cameras were there, okay? And all hell broke loose, to say the least. Treasure is cool as a cucumber, okay? Treasure's like, you know, I just wanted to, you know, reach out to you and because I've been calling you and, you know. First of all, China walks in the area that they're in, the living room or wherever, and she was like, what's up? You wanted to talk to me? Like, she, she seemed like she was totally over it. So it's evident that there was an issue that China obviously did not let Treasure know that there was an issue. She obviously has an issue with her. And China's whole thing is, you know, I don't have to answer the phone for you if I don't want to. I'm not obligated. So she let Treasure know that. And Treasure was like, okay, but I just wanted to talk to you because... I wanted to know, like, what was up? Like, I was calling you, texting you. You know, you weren't responding to my calls. And China's like, look, I'm going through lawsuits. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I don't have to text you. I don't have to call you um, or return your phone calls. So Treasure is, like I said, she's calm. And I think the real reason why Treasure was calm is because, obviously, the cameras were present. But she did not want to want this on film. Like, and the producers are trying to convince them that they should talk on camera, you know, real sleazeball like, to be honest with you. So China starts to kick up, kick up, kick up. And China brought up the fact that she gives Treasure money. Treasure did not bring up the money situation. So Treasure, you can tell she was hurt, you know, and she's just like, when did I, when was the last time I asked you for money? And, and you know, China, she's like, are you kidding me? I gave you $5,000, $10,000. I had to make you fill out a W-9 so I could write you off on my taxes. Like, I don't know how it went from 
I don't have to answer your calls if I don't want to because I'm busy to something or other I give you, I always give you money or I'm just like, whoa, whoa, China. Nobody was talking about money. Is that why you're mad? Is it, is it, are you mad because you're tired of giving her money? Was Treasure trying to get in contact with her to borrow money? It got ugly. You know, um, Treasure said that you were trying, she was trying to embezzle money. That's why she made her fill out a W-9, which I don't know how that makes sense, but whatever. Um, Treasure also said that her man gave her 30 grand to buy her truck and you helped me with the rest by giving me $5,000 and that was last year. China pulls up the receipts in the phone or the transactions and it was from 2018, which is what Treasure said. You know, China called her a bum and then, oh, this is how it started with the money. I'm sorry, y'all. It went from... I don't have to call you. I got lawsuits going on. I got, I got this and that. I don't have to call you. I don't have to respond to your text message to everybody always wants something from me. And that's when Treasure says, what is it in particular that I like that I'm doing to make you think that like I'm using you or, or always want something from you. And that's when China brought up the money. Then it goes into, you know, China, like, I've asked you, the only thing I've asked you to do is like post my business and China's like, I don't want to post your business. I'm not obligated to post your business. See, here's the thing, right? Let me ask y'all a question, Royal Family. Like, if you had a friend for 20 some odd years, because like, how long did they say they know each other? Like 10 years? Let's just say 10 years. Or however long. You have a close friend and... You're working with them and you're, you know, you're help building their empire, their brand and stuff. And then your friend starts a business. Is it too much to ask for you as a friend to post your friend's, like, is, is it that you didn't want her business to flourish because you know you needed her and you didn't want that to take away from what she was doing for you? And as far as giving her money, I mean, the girl pretty much worked for you. So like, like... You said you did it out of the kindness of your heart, but she was actually working for you. Like, I don't know. I, I don't I don't trust people or I look at people sideways who claim they do something out of the kindness of their heart and then throw it in somebody's face. It's, that's just so, t I think that's totally tacky. I think it's extremely, extremely tacky. And if you had it, yeah, you're right. You're not obligated to do anything, which is what Treasure says. You know, you're not obligated to do anything, but... I couldn't see myself doing that. I mean, everybody's different. I can't compare everybody else to myself. But I'm just wondering, you know. And I asked a few people that I knew, and they thought it was ridiculous. It's like just posting with the influence that you have, just posting her business. I mean, and if you didn't want to post her business, why not tell her? Why is it that she has to be a bum? You know, China called her a bum. She told her to get out of her house. You know, Treasure Outside was so upset you know, Treasure says she's a fraud and that's okay. You don't have to do anything for me. And it got really ugly really quick. And China, sweetie, uh, in that moment, I didn't see Angela or China. I saw Tokyo Tony. And Tokyo did say that she treats her friends and her employees like crap. And yeah, girl, because I don't understand how it went from I don't have to call you, I don't have to answer your calls and texts to I'm tired everybody always wanting me to do something for them so could it be that the reason why treasure was blowing up her phone is because maybe she needed a loan and china was tired of it but if that's your friend that's your ride or die like we see what treasure has done we see how china's like this is my ride or die i've been friends with her for this that and the third thing she helped me with this she helped me with that y'all friends y'all so close if you are tired of her asking you for money then tell her that why is everybody so afraid? Not everybody, but why are people so afraid to keep it a buck with someone that you call your friend or someone that, what's the worst that could happen? If you tell her, look, I'm, I'm not paying for nothing else. Like I'm not buying anything else. Is it, if you tell her that, then what? She's, she won't be at your beck and call anymore, soaking your feet, icing your toe. Is that what it is? Something don't seem right. And I know a few people don't really trust treasure and don't care for her. But I'm not feeling the way China handled that situation, especially because the cameras are rolling. Like, you embarrass that girl. 
You embarrassed that girl. That girl did not embarrass you on this season. She wasn't spilling your, your secrets. She wasn't spilling your tea. I mean, dang. What happened to loyalty, man? So, next week, they're going to pick up where they left off. But this was the big, like, fight, you know, that happened that caused uh, Treasure to not be bothered. I mean, can they mend their relationship? Of course, anything is possible. Would she, would, if she doesn't want to, as far as Treasure, if she doesn't want to mend the relationship, I wouldn't blame her. I think she should focus on um, her kid because she does have a son that's in jail currently. Um, she says she has a man. So focus on your family over there, girl, because, man, like, China really embarrassed her, y'all. She called her a bum. She called her a bum B. Like, dang. Like, that wasn't necessary. I'm sorry. That wasn't necessary. Treasure did not call you out your name. Treasure didn't raise her voice. Treasure didn't be disrespectful to you. She just wanted to talk to you. And maybe she was hitting you up to ask you for money and you're tired. But you couldn't at least, like, have a little bit of decency with her or a little bit of respect. Like, you really treated her like a dirty dog and kicked her out your house and then closed the door and said, bye, B. Eek. Friends like that, man. Who needs enemies? So, Royal Family, if you saw it, let me know. Comment below. Do you think, this is my question I want to pose. If you are friends with someone and your friend starts a business and they say, hey, you know, you have more followers than me. Can you post my business a couple of times? How much is too much? Would you do it? Would you feel obligated? I mean, that's a bad word. Nobody's obligated to, to do anything. But if, would you be offended if your friend asked you, to kind of like post maybe like once, twice a month or whatever until their business picks up moment, momentum. Is that a bad thing? Especially if your friend is basically helping you build your brand and working for you, working with you, making sure everything is okay. If you saw the episode, let me know what you what you think. If you didn't, hopefully I've given a good I've given you a good explanation. But let me know, like that word obligated. China's right. She's not obligated to do anything. But girl, you didn't have to do treasure like that. You did her like a dirty dog. You treated her like a dirty dog. And I know she's embarrassed. And if I was treasure, that would probably be the last time that I stepped foot in Black China's house. Probably. And if even if you wanted to mend fences and you apologize, you would have to do it the same way that you embarrassed me. Because I don't really give people opportunities to treat me like that, you know. Um, but then again, Treasure, you know what you signed up for. You saw that Wendy Williams meltdown. You know how nasty she can be. So you should be used to it. Just because you've seen it happen to everyone else doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the bullet won't hit you. But I hope that they can mend fences. And I really hope that China can really get her act together. So we're going to see China go to church next week. I will be back, royal family. Be sure to thumbs up this video. Like it if you like it. Get down in the comments. I'll meet you down there as always. And until next time, peace.